the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time, is come and lord we declare that tonight is that time in the name of jesus we pray amen and amen give jesus a big big hand clap and please you be seated Ubangi ji ni nada o kaka sunanka ubangi ji kai saya bo na gil mama sunanka ubangi ji ni nada o kaka sunanka ubangi ji kai saya bo na gil mama this is our testimony we'll raise your banner high we'll shine your light so bright we'll sing in honor of you we'll raise your banner high we'll shine Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to teach and to share with you the secret behind the transformation of nations. of cities and of territories these are history is full of men families nations and territories that were transformed from developing nations to de developed nations from third world nations as we call it and even to africa let me begin my reading tonight from the book of isaiah chapter 66 and verse 8 will it be projected isaiah 66 so that we hurry up i'll open my bible Isaiah 66 
if you have something to write may i request that you write isaiah 66 and verse 8 okay beautiful here's what it says who, who had heard such a thing who had seen such things he said shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day it's a question and then it says shall a nation be born at once And he says, her children, may that be the prophecy over our land in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible is full of patterns and principles that if followed can lead men and women families and societies territories and nations into an enviable destiny the bible is very clear as to god's intention for us as individuals and as a people jeremiah 29 and verse 11 the bible says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you saith the lord he says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means based on the authority of scripture, there is no man, there is no woman, there is no nation and no territory that should live a life of retrogression, a life of stagnation and a life of decadence. However, that is not the case as we see across several nations of the world, several nations. in Africa respectfully but sadly even in our land I believe like you do that this is not the best of us as a people and that in the name of Jesus Christ as a result of this crusade God is going to be lifting us from where we are to the place of destiny if you're in agreement shout a loud amen For the purpose of tonight's teaching, I want to give you five keys, five, five principles that are responsible for territorial transformation. The principles are irrefutable if and when understood and applied can transform any nation nation of who is worthy of worship and allegiance the first thing that must happen to any territory if you must transit from where you are to where you need to be if we as a people must transit from where we are to the place of destiny there has to be a clear definition of who is worthy of our worship, who is worthy of our allegiance, who is worthy of our loyalty. Psalm 33. Let's work together, media, so that we'll see if we can project these scriptures very quickly. 
Psalm 33 and verse 12. 33 and verse 12. The Bible says, Blessed is the nation who the Lord, whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation who God, whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he had chosen for Of his own inheritance that means there are many semblances of God but he says blessed is any nation that decides to choose the God of heaven the Lord of glory the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords like I introduced Jesus to us yesterday blessed is any nation Keep the scripture there, please. Blessed is any nation, it says, whose God is the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. This was the contest between Elijah, the Tishbite, who was a prophet, and the prophets of Baal. Until that time, it seemed as though the God of heaven was relegated and there were all kinds of gods and deities that were being worshipped, including Baal. And Elijah called for a context at Mount Carmel. And here's what he said. Elijah came to the people and said, Tarot Nation, how long shall he halt between two opinions? He said, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer a word. I hope tonight you will answer. If God be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. I was reading up the history of the Tarok nation just again to remind myself and I was I was I became so emotional as I was looking at what Wikipedia wrote about the Tarok nation as the history from references that had come from individuals academicians historians uh, you know royalties and so on and so forth and I read how that as early as 1904 that the missionaries came and brought the gospel even though it came with a semblance of colonialism but that they came with the gospel and many territories rejected them and rejected the gospel i hope i'm right on that history and then the bible says there was a group of people who embraced these missionaries and embraced the gospel and with the gospel came access to education and with the gospel came access to greatness. Today, without argument, we can celebrate individual achievements. Men and women who have been lifted from this ground and from this soil. In science and tech, largely in the military and defense and security, God has lifted people because our forefathers, with open hearts, even though confused, even though not educated, they made this decision that I may not know what the future holds for this group of people. But now that you have proposed that there is a God in heaven who can lift and who can make great, we embrace your message. And God said, since you have embraced me, let me show you what I can do with men when they hand over their lives to me. Tarok Nation, the Lord is speaking to us tonight. We must stop dilly-dallying between options. There are territories that have chosen philosophy as their God. There are territories that have chosen man-made strategies as their God. But once again, the Lord has caused this supernatural convergence to remind us again that we go back through history and learn that any territory that rejects the God of heaven, it is only a matter of time. There will be a plethora of casualties that will come upon that territory. Are we learning tonight?
a clear definition of who is worthy a clear definition of who you must serve because when your children ask you daddy mommy who do we serve and who do i pledge my allegiance to there should not be any confusion as to what you will tell them in the bible oftentimes they would capture an experience of god and they would say teach your children if they ask you this question tell them let me show you one more scripture very quickly is god speaking to us tonight job chapter 12 and verse 23 job chapter 12 and verse 23 job 12 23 the bible says he increased the nations and destroyed them he enlarged the nations and strained them again another version says he makes nations great it is it is god that sustains the power to make any nation great there is no nation that becomes great by itself my bible and your bible says it was the lord that advanced moses and aaron we do not just go forward we are moved forward by the god of heaven read your bible and see how god lifted men from nothing ask daniel ask joseph god is able to lift when dr panam was leading us in these powerful sessions of worship i sat back there and i listened to him as he was sharing his story i said look what god can do can i tell you this everyone under the sound of my voice inside outside scattered scattered around inside this this theater this stadium and those outside i see you as far as you are and i want you to know listen to me that if you make up your mind that i may not know what the future holds regardless the disadvantages around my life but i make up my mind once and for all that i will not dilly-dally about my allegiance again i make up my mind that the god of heaven will become my god how can I bow before you and then bow down before a man? No way. No way. How can I kneel down before you and then kneel down before a man? No way. No way. Because you are my God. I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. He says choose life that you and your children. That means your decisions move beyond you. Your decision. So number one. Any nation that wants to be transformed must have a clear definition of who is worthy of worship and allegiance. As for me, just like Dr. Panam sang, I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. And if you doubt what God can do, look at the life of the man standing before you. Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, no man can do these things except God be with him. Number two. What is the second key that is responsible for territorial transformation? Write this down if you can. No territory is transformed until they have a clear vision. A clear vision that represents the future 
of that territory. A clear vision is the second key. A vision that becomes the driving force for everyone within that territory. America is great today because there is something called the American dream. The American dream is a clear, unmistakable representation of the expectation of the Americans. In leadership, we learn that you are not able to coordinate people and resources to achieve anything until there is a clear vision. Listen, one of the, the unbecoming, sadly, but respectfully speaking, of African nations and territories and cities in decadence is that there is no theme and there is no vision that inspires, that becomes the driving force. Who are we and where are we going? It's a question we must answer. As a people, we have a common destiny. But can we define what that destiny is? Respectfully speaking, dear Tarok Nation, what should I expect from the Tarok Nation in the next 30 years? What will we tell our children and our children's children? Who are we? And where are we going? We are not just inhabitants existing with everybody trying to make, to achieve personal things. There must be a theme, a representation of who we are and what God wants us to do as a people. So that at the back of everyone who is the son and daughter of the soil, you have it at the back of your mind that there is an anthem that represents our pursuit our passion regardless clan regardless where we are geographically speaking we must be governed by a common creed that represents where we are going any nation and any territory that does not have a creed a vision a theme cannot go far this is true this applies to businesses this applies to institutions this applies to nations, broadly speaking. There must be a clear representation of who we are as a people and where we are going to. Hear what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. My Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people, no matter how well intentioned, no matter how well meaning, where there is no vision, the people perish. Habakkuk chapter 2, when you read from verse 2 and 3, Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 2 and 3, it says write the vision. Don't just think the vision. Don't just wish the vision. Don't just imagine the vision. Write the vision, it says. Then it says, make it plain. That means explain it to the understanding of everyone. And the Bible leaves you with an assurance that he may run that reads it. The energy for pursuit is hidden in vision. Any family that does not have a vision will not go far. Any clan that does not have a vision will not go far. Any nation and territory that does not have a vision, when you meet an average responsible American, no matter how ignorant, no matter how lawless, he will recite to you and say, I have a dream. There is what is called the American dream. A representation of the destiny of that nation. With all due respect and honor, my proposition to us, therefore, is that in all that we have to do, there has to be a creed that represents our common destiny. We should not just look into the past and keep wishing and making beautiful memories of the past. There must be a creed that the children are taught from infancy, from primary school to secondary school to the colleges. Let them know that we are not a scattered people hoping to find meaning for ourselves. This is what we have defined as our pursuit. This is where we are going the next 50 years. Let me tell you this. Visions outlive the visionaries. 
we must be able to immortalize our impact by being people of vision there are corporations today in africa and across the world when the individuals die that is the end of the program the end of the business the end of the pursuit the reason is because they had no clear vision visions do not die even when the visionaries die there must be a creed that is greater than any individual that immortalizes the impact of the tarot man number two vision number three are we learning tonight the third key that will make for the transformation of any nation and any territory is values values i also put in bracket ethics and codes of conduct no society and no nation thrives except by values there has to be a definition of ethics values and codes of conduct in proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28 the bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is likened to a city that does not have walls that means a city with no defense values constrain us and help us to coordinate our energy to be very productive and to be efficient how do we behave as a people someone shout values one more time shout values watch this look at me please when you go to the bank tomorrow there is a way they behave you look at a banker and he does not have to tell you i am a banker there is a code of operation are we are we is that true we have so many military people here and when you see a military man whether with a uniform or not sooner or later their ethics and their codes of operation that make us know that education is excellent models that help us see that god can pick a man from nothing to something look up please let me tell you this um most people will know who is mark zuckerberg someone help me answer who is mark zuckerberg my dear people the founder of facebook have you seen him yes do you know him no does he know you no but because he has reason to be someone who represents a model in an area say it you are forced to learn about him and many people pattern their lives after him did you know that there are many people today who can fight now do you love football here footballers wave your hands betraying yourself now footballers this is a stadium hallelujah man united barcelona believe me i don't even know what i'm saying so don't you think that i have passion for that thing i'm only repeating what i heard <laughs> hallelujah are we together now how come those players do not know you and yet you can save and save and buy an original jersey and be proud of it as an achievement and wear it with joy and pride do you know what happened to you something about their excellence something about their results inspired you enough to model your life after them that is the definition of influence influence is the ability to have an effect on another person the ability to cause a person and a people to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty we need influencers men and women who will make loving god not look like a thing of shame men and women who will show that dignity of labor is excellent transformation is difficult until there is a reference you cannot change into nothing there must be something you are seeing and let me pause here and ask us as a people to in one minute clap our hands in honor to every one person every general every professor every diplomat who has come from this soil and has become a model and an inspiration can we give them a round of applause in honor every pastor every general 
every royal father who has defied pain who has defied limitation and today they become inspirations not just to us but to nations Here is my prayer that one day we will stand here and when we are clapping, you will be part of those we are clapping for too. Today you are clapping for others, but that you will be so challenged by tonight's teaching and you will make up your mind. A greatly revered mentor, father who has gone to be with the Lord now, Dr. Miles Munro, he inspired me so greatly. When I was about to start ministry, I wrote letters to several men of God just to honor them and to tell them what God was doing in my life. I'm not sure it got to some. But then this letter got to this great man in Bahamas, Dr. Miles Munro. And you can imagine a young boy about to start this journey and he wrote me a letter handwritten and he inspired me he was a man who inspired me so greatly he was an advisor to about 16 presidents had the largest church in bahamas a man of impeccable character he wrote about 46 books about 40 of them were bestsellers he was a man who had what most people would pray for in many lifetimes and yet he was a humble man he was a noble man and i said this is it this is what my future looks like is there someone whose life you can look at today and say you represent my future this is it there must be sufficient people who rise from this soil who can inspire others not towards negative things listen there are some of you who were behaving well until you met certain models bad examples bad sources of inspiration you were not smoking you were not drinking you lived a decent and a disciplined life until you watched a movie until you watched tv and you saw someone redefine success for you and you made up your mind today oh dear we have all kinds of people behaving in different ways this is not to condemn but this is to challenge you we must have models this is my call to the tarot nation that god must grant us grace to have models and then let me challenge us respectfully speaking don't trivialize anybody making significant impact if and when you find them now please understand that i'm not saying this representing to myself at all it is a challenge any nation that downplays their gifts will have to buy that gift we must be very open to celebrate the men and the women that god is raising not by some structure but we must have a sense of appreciation let me tell you this most times we only honor our gifts when they become great not when they are rising it is a challenge that we have in the middle belt and God must help us to be discerning and celebrate people while they are rising, not when they are risen. If you are not part of a man's success story, don't expect honor when he arrives. People will only celebrate those who were there rising with them, not those who come when they are risen. There were men who came to David at the cave of Adullam. And they discerned that this man was anointed and they invested in that anointing. They became the mighty man of the, the mighty men of David. My challenge, therefore, is that we must create a system that begins to celebrate potentials, not just greatness. Go to our primary schools, start looking for the best students that are there. Let's start investing in that future. Because those little children, they may not seem to know much, but they are already showing you potentials of diligence. When you have a family of 10 people and you have a young boy of 10 years with no father, no mother, and he farms by himself and he's paying his school fees, that is greatness in the making. Participate in that story. 
we need to invest in people rising many of our young people today who are plunged into irresponsible lifestyles they attempted to test the journey to greatness and they found out they were alone no support now this is not to compare territories but there are territories in this nation there are territories in africa that as a people they will never go down because they have mastered the art of harnessing their talents and investing in it we cannot wait for people to fish their way struggle their way cry their way fail their way then when they become great we expect that they show allegiance to us parents believe in your children while they are rising not when they are risen the young boy may not be able to speak English, but he's a disciplined boy. He does not steal. I know that he's not past charm yet, but celebrate him for what you see in him that is good. Don't allow people feel stupid for being decent. Don't allow people feel stupid for being right. The young boy may not have gone to school yet, but every week you see him in church while his colleagues are drinking and smoking. He's behaving himself wisely. That is a disciplined leader in the making. Invest in that potential. Are we together? We must learn to discern greatness. Many families today, many territories today, if it were left for them, their children and sons of the soils may not rise to positions of notoriety because of the sheer amount of discouragement that comes within those places. We must learn this as a lesson. You see some of these are small children here. I was very honored when I saw some of these little children running around the crusade ground. Do not drive them. They are the next apostles. They are the next evangelists. They are the ones who will stand in this stadium someday. By the time we fight them, do not forget, no matter how young you are, age will come knocking at your door. Let us not make the mistake that the West has made now. Most of them in the 60s, the 70s and early 80s, their parents were the great evangelists and the wonderful people. But they neglected their children. They didn't carry their children along. They thought they would be young forever. Now those children that they refused to invest in satan came and invested in that generation today they are the leaders and now the society has become a reflection of the convictions of those children tarot nation do not fight your children do not fight your your, your young ones do not fight the failures let us invest in them as they run around with no clothes someone who god has helped you make up your mind and say i'm going to pay the school fees of five children i may not do everything but i can start tonight is a hard teaching but it's god speaking to us we must have models that help our people to understand that an entitlement mentality does not make anybody great. An entitlement mentality is waiting for someone to be blessed and then to come and bless you by rising. That is the mentality of people who don't rise and don't go anywhere. Number five. The fifth key that brings territorial transformation to any nation and to any people is creating the enabling environment that makes for development no territory will rise and no territory will develop without an enabling environment development is atmosphere dependent we must create the condition that allows for development and there are three of them that i want to bring to you and then we begin to pray number one institutions please write it down no territory can be transformed beyond the institutions that it has there must be a passion in us to build institutions educational institutions especially because institutions have a unique way of driving people into that territory 
institutions have a unique way of neutralizing certain negative aspects of culture. Institutions are powerful. You check territories today. For many years I lived in Zaria. And even though it's a territory of a strong Islamic, you know, affiliation. But because of the presence of so many institutions, the universities, the College of Education, the, the Federal uh, College of Education, the, the Polytechnics, because of the presence of these institutions, it has seemed to assume a mold that can allow that, that heterogeneous collection of positive values and then it makes for development. Let me challenge politicians respectfully. Let me challenge elder statesmen respectfully. Posterity will judge us if we go to the grave without contributing our quota to build institutions within this place. Listen, it is not a tell them thing. It's a tell everyone. We have a collective role. The first institution is family. The first institution is family. Every armed robber comes from a family. Everyone who is causing trouble in society comes from a family. So if every family here represented, when you make a covenant as a father, that I will not just give birth to children I cannot take care of. I will be responsible over my children. Don't give birth to children and hand them over to someone to take care of them for you. No. The family institution. Don't just wait for some minister or royal father or some wealthy man to come and build universities. Let's start with what we have. It is cheaper building families. All it takes is conviction. Mother, father, let your life be the first example of Jesus to your children. Every family should contribute to the Tarok nation. By producing responsible, well-behaved children. Now, please don't feel bad. I know there are families here and there with struggles. We understand. That's why we are here tonight. However, there must be a determination. Before a young man and a young woman gets married, don't just ask them, where did you school? What do you have? Do you have money? Thank God for those. But what are your values? What are you going to transfer to those children? Don't add trouble to us. Do you know, do you understand the principles that make for greatness? We must build institutions. Then we must build infrastructure. Infrastructure. I went, um, we had quite a few visitations around our territory. And I saw that there is a great need for infrastructure in our area. And we must obtain grace from God. We must build infrastructure. We must trust God for grace to build infrastructure. Can I tell you something sincerely, dear Tarot Nation? Foreigners will not come and build our walls. We will be the ones to build and transform this nation. For every young man here and young woman who is doing well, as God begins to help you and you begin to rise, as God blesses you, don't go around building institutions somewhere else and forget about your place. Come and change that mud house into something that is of dignity. We must build infrastructure. Number three, we must secure our land. Someone shout security. One more time, please shout it. Say security. There can be no development in any territory if we do not invest in creating the enabling environment and security is one of the major components. And I thank God for Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 